Welcome back, Unit 3, Chemical Bonding and Bonding Theories. Types of bonds. Ionic bonds, chemical bonds, are chemical bonds formed by electrostatic forces. So they are, they are chemical bonds formed by electrostatic forces that exist between uh, ions of opposite charge. Opposite charge, which means positive and negative. They typically occur okay between metal and non-metal. Covalent bonds result from the sharing of electrons between two atoms. They typically occur okay between non-metals. Uh, Non-polar covalent bond occurs between two atoms with comparable electronegativities, resulting in covalent bonds with equally shared electrons. Polar covalent bonds uh, are formed from two atoms with a difference in electronegativity, resulting in covalent bonding where there is an equal sharing of electrons. That is, the electrons are drawn closer to the nuclear of the atom with the stronger electronegativity. Coval uh, coordinate uh, covalent bonds are formed between two atoms which uh, in which both uh, electrons are donated by a single atom. So, a recap. So, ionic bonds, are uh, they occur okay mainly between uh, non-metal and metal. So, uh, these are like, um, can be uh, sodium chloride, like this, um, uh, metal and non-metal. Then uh, covalent bonds, um, uh, there are three types. They are nonpolar, which means uh, the, the atoms will behave in the same um, uh, comparable. It can be the same atom or comparable uh, atoms with, uh, with the, the same uh, electronegativity. Then polar bonds are formed uh, from two atoms with a difference uh, in electronegativity. Then coordinate bonds, uh, they, are, they are formed when one atom donates uh, all the electrons to form uh, a, a bond. So here is a summary. So ionic bonds, electronic negativity is typically above 1.7. Then for polar covalent bonds, uh, it's uh, below 1.7. Then for non-polar, it's approximately zero, as you can see here. So polar it just means it has got a, a charge. Uh, so the Polar it means positive or and negative, uh, but these ones will be a bit weaker as compared to the ionic bonds. So here is an example uh, of a, a hydrogen atom. You can see since it, it is the same um, uh, hydrogen here and hydrogen here, you can see uh, these ones they they, they form um, a weak. Uh, like attractive forces between them because they are the same atom so it's more like a, a, a balanced one so you can see they to be the nucleus and this nucleus they repel each other and the electron and this electron they repel each other so they form more like a balanced uh, a compound so these ones uh, you can see this is the bond length so the bond length also has got a contribution to the to the strength of the of the covalent bond between the two, but this shall be discussed uh, later. So as you can see, this is a hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. You can see uh, the the chlorine is a is a bit larger than the hydrogen atom. So so the the most of the the bond length is towards this. Uh, 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 atom because it is with a larger uh, size than the, the hydrogen bond, but you can see uh, they are forming uh, some weak forces between them. So it's a, it's more like a polar covalent bond. So uh, Lewis dot symbols the uh, the valence electron configuration 
of the constituent atom of a covalent compound are important factors in determining um, the structure, stoichiometry, and properties. So the electron configuration is how the electrons are shared between the two atoms. That determines uh, the structure, stoichiometry, and properties. Stoichiometry is how it reacts with other uh, compounds and uh, uh, in those chemical reactions. Uh, so point number two, for example, chlorine has got seven valent uh, electron with one shot of an octet. Remember what we did in the previous chapter, uh, the octet, ru octet rule, the, you must have eight electrons to form a, a balanced or a noble gas configuration. So as you can see here, chlorine, it has got seven, two, four, uh, two, four, uh, six, then seven here. So, so it's it's missing one here, and so it joins with another uh, chlorine to form uh, chlorine gas. So, uh, chlorine gas like this. So basically, they, they share this one to form a balanced um, uh, electron configuration. So two electrons can share. They are unpaired, so this is the unpaired one. They, they, they are unpaired electrons by making a covalent bond and forming uh, chlorine gas. So, it's, uh, so each chlorine atom is now uh, uh, now is an octet, which means it has got eight electrons surrounding it. So basically, uh, this is how you show it using the Lewis dot symbols. So this is the Lewis dot symbol. So when you're asked uh, to draw maybe a certain compound using Lewis dot symbols, uh, that is how you do it. Um, so they normally use uh, for one compound they use dot and the other one they use x uh, in case they are different um, uh, atoms. So let's say the other one is chlorine, you'll be using dots. Then the other one maybe is hydrogen, you'll be using dots. So it will be more like uh, uh, for chlorine, let me draw it like this. Uh, uh, this will be for hydrogen. So like this. So they form a hydrochloric acid like this from the previous. So hydrogen has got one which we are representing using an X. Uh, so let's move on to the next slide. Uh, formal charge. Formal charge compares the number of electrons around a neutral atom versus the number of electrons around an atom uh, in a molecule. So formal charge is basically like uh, you want to assign a charge to each uh, atom or element in a compound. So the, when you are asked to calculate formal charge, this is the the formula. Formal charge is equal to number of valence electrons uh, in free atom uh, minus number of lone pair. So lone pair, we demonstrated then half the number of uh, bond pair electrons. So for example, we've got ammonia. So let us calculate the formal charge of the atoms in ammonia. So ammonia, this is how it's written. It's, H, it's NH3. So uh, so basically what's happening here, when you uh, take uh, the number, if you go to your periodic table, you see that the outer shell of uh, nitrogen, it has got um, uh, five electrons. Like this. So basically what happens, hydrogen comes uh, and uh, forms a bond to make an octet. Like this. So this is how uh, they are bonding here, but here we are using the Lewis dot. Uh, this is, uh, uh, they are just using it this uh, line to represent this bond. Uh, this is just an example. So now when you're asked to calculate the formal charge of nitrogen, so it will be a uh, number of uh, valence electrons, number of valence electrons. So you know that nitrogen has got five. So this is where the five is coming from. Then minus a uh, number of lone pairs. So, so nitrogen has got, or, uh, uh, this lone pair which has got two electrons, so minus two, as you can see here. Then half, this is the half, half number of bonds. 
uh, number of uh, of bond pair electrons. So we've got um, uh, three bonds, which means in each bond there are two electrons. So that's where the six is coming. So it will be uh, five minus two minus three, which gives you a zero. So the formal charge of nitrogen is zero in this case, or zero depending from the, with the school you went to. So this is how you calculate uh, the formal charge. So basically that's it for the formal charge. Then uh, uh, you should also know that, that there are double and triple bonds. So depending on the electronic uh, electro, uh, electron configuration and the properties of the elements you are dealing with, a nitrogen can form single bonds, double bonds, or a triple bonds. So it's just something you should know. So so as you can see, uh, we, when you calculate like this, you can see that nitrogen in this element is with a, a positive uh, formal charge. But in this uh, configuration, it is with a neutral uh, 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 formal charge. So, for example, remember we are uh, we, this one we have already dealt with it in the case of uh, ammonia. So hydrogen here, we've already dealt with it, and we found that it's a, it is with a neutral charge zero. So this is the same case uh, with the other ones. So for example, let's calculate this one. So uh, number of uh, free electrons in the, remember, uh, valence electrons in the free atom. Remember, it's, since it's nitrogen, we already discussed it's five minus a uh, number of lone. So in this case, it is also two lone uh, electrons. The number of bonds there are three, so it's six. So it goes back to zero as well. So that's why we are saying nitrogen is with a neutral. So there are three options uh, or three possibilities. There is a positive charge, formal charge, negative, or a neutral, which is zero. So they normally we just say it is a neutral charge. So basically that's how it is. So let's move on. So there are resonance structures. Uh, sometimes even when the formal charges are considered, the bonding in some uh, molecules or ions cannot be described by the Lewis structure. So remember the Lewis structure uh, is the one we showed you in the previous slides. So, uh, for example, if what, uh, such as in the case of ozone. So, ozone is formed by three oxygen atoms, an allotrope of oxygen with a V-shaped uh, structure and an angle of 105. So, that's, uh, so basically what, what they're saying is a V-shaped structure with an angle of 105 degrees. So, this is the angle we are talking about. So now, uh, when you speak of resonance structures, uh, resonance structures, they, they can change, uh, which means electrons can move from one atom to the another. So as you can see, let me uh, rub here. As you can see, in this case, uh, this uh, oxygen, um, this oxygen atom has got six uh, free electrons, but in this case, it has changed, it has moved to this side. So now the, the bonds are also changing, as you can see here. So resonance structures, they can change. The bonding structure can shift. So now uh, for the Lewis uh, uh, structure, it can, um, it can be affected. That's why it, we are saying for some of these resonance structures, the Lewis uh, structure of uh, describing these uh, compounds is affected. Uh, in that case, it means you cannot have a single um, a Lewis structure to describe it. So in this case, uh, they it will behave in two forms at any given state, which means it changes uh, from time to time. So uh, the double-headed arrow uh, indicates uh, that the actual uh, electronic structure is an average of those shown uh, above. So this one, this is double. Arrow. So it, it shows that since it is changing from this to that at any given point, so they are saying the the average of those two above is the is the structure. So the position of the atoms in the same is the same, 
but the position of the electrons is different. So that I was trying to explain to you that you can see the the oxygens, these ones, are not moving, they are the same, but the bonding which is happen, happening between so it's electrons which are moving from one atom to the other. You can see. So in this case, if you let's say we are examining um uh, the one in the the oxygen in the middle, you can see uh you are examining the oxygen in the middle. Oh, so uh, let's look at this one. So if you look at this oxygen in the mid, uh, on the one on the left here, you can see it has got uh, the double bond is on this is on the left, but on the second one is on the right. You can see. So if, then when you look at this one, it, on the left has got 11, uh, I mean uh, two lone electrons and a double bond. But on this one it's got six lone electrons and a single bond. So it's, uh, so, so, so it's the, the positions of the, of the atoms are the same, but what's changing is the electrons. They are moving from one atom to the other. So that's what we mean by resonant uh, structures. So there are many resonant structures, but oxygen is one of them. Uh, so uh, the deeper resonance structures, which I also uh, uh, discuss them uh, in the tutorials on our websites. Uh, so these uh, resonance structures are very common in examinations. So we'll uh, show you uh, how to do them and how to remember them. Because sometimes you are asked to draw uh, the resonance structure. So you have to remember where the bones are and how they shift from one to the another. So uh, please check out our... A website uh, is given on the right here. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next uh, slide. So basically, uh, these are some of the examples um, of um, of some of the structures. So we'll be talking of hybridization, which are the the shells uh, or the the types of um, uh, uh, clouds of electrons that are formed. So there's S and P, SP2, and and so on, and uh, this one. Uh, we'll be talking of a lone pair. Uh, this one will be talking of a molecular geometry. So when you say linear, it means it will be having a linear structure. If we are saying trigroupan, it will be like more like a triangle, something like that. When you are talking of a triangle, it means it's got four sides. So so it will be forming something like a like a like a square or a rectangle, something like that. So uh, the molecular geometry, uh, you can see the angles between the atoms. Uh, it's 180. So this is something just interesting to know. So that when you are drawing uh, some of, uh, if 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 you are drawing like this one, you already know uh, that it should uh, form uh, a T shape or something like that. That's how we should. So remember, these are examples, and these are the angles that are expected angles, and these are other examples. Because this one is referring to this, so don't confuse. Uh, because these sides, okay, okay, this side. This is the um, this is the whatever the division so that you don't confuse. But it's just something that you should know, and is available in some of the chemistry textbooks. So basically, this is what we cover on the uh, unit three. So uh, if you want more intense um, tutorials on this, uh, you can uh, check out our website. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or uh, use our email there, then we can do our best to respond. Thank you for watching, and uh, uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.